there we go. <clears throat> Alright, let's send out some announcements, but ladies and gentlemen, welcome to... Uh, I don't even know what genre this game is. I don't know who developed it, who published it, who wrote it, who acted in it. I know nothing. It's probably one of the most on-faith games I have ever streamed. Okay. It's the weirdest way I've ever gotten a good... So what... What's with the tree person? What's with the, the bear with a party hat? What's with the guy who's part tree and part person? I'm so confused by everything I'm seeing. But... At least the the freaking don it's not donkey it's not a donkey lore the goat is a goat oh you're right book we'll get to perform at the royal palace during my festival also why is the guy on the right so fat and yet like he's got super skinny legs how is he standing up is it all the acorns he's eating is that the significance of the necklace princess christina I think we're done. Why is there a dog with lipstick? You know what's hidden the way in the royal palace, don't you? Uh... The royal diamonds! The most valuable gem hidden away in the impenetrable royal palace! So sparkly! So valuable! Oh, the money! The things I could do with it! The love I can buy! Listen up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, no, I'm good. I'm good. I mean, who are you going to sell that to? Who's going to have enough money to buy it? Who's going to have enough bunny money to buy it without having problems of buying it and all the legal ramifications that'll come from that? Who's actually, like, how do you get enough money to buy love? And this is the most important question of all. How do you pronounce it gem? We need a promotional poster and uh, I'll work on some sort of dragon costume. Why is our comrade a sock? You mad, crazy son of a witch. Love it. Hey, Huck. Hey, Jester. Uh, how do you know my name? Well, I looked at your outfit and, uh... Oh, you're one of those psychic name guessers. Uh, sure, kid. Why is our name Jester? Did they know? Are all parents psychic in this universe? You deem yourself royal enough to talk to a princess peasant? I don't know. Am I? Let me ask the princess. Princess, is he royal enough to talk to you? No, he's a very dirty little man. Uh, you, uh... You heard her. Now scram, Pez! Dude, I just want to talk to the frog with the crown. Jester! Ooh, you sneaky little mouse. You remind me of myself when I met Bethany Beth. Uh, okay, that's a, what we in the business refer to as a non sequitur. Can't solve it with words? Get the sword! That's a hell of a slogan. And I also have, uh, the finest armor money can buy. And, uh,. I will be the hero. The oh my god. The armor is fine armor. You guys totally have a chance to win the contest and perform at the Royal Theatrical Spectacle. Excellent. Good, good. And then I will rob you blind, princess. And finally, someone will love me. For I will have the money to make them pretend to love me. <laughs> Random, you didn't tell me we were playing Elon Musk's prequel story. I mean, of course Elon Musk would be a jester. No, think about it. That's not just a generic insult. I've decided to kill this man. Bitterly Beth, she's the love of my life. Definitely murdering this man. You are my wife, the start city mayor. my life. 
Whoa, how long have you been searching? Gosh, let me see. One, two, yep. It's been 523 years. Jesus. Sometimes I wonder whether I'm wasting my youth. So if the tree is an ant, who's this guy? Did his parents? Oh God! I heard howling in the forest last night. Must be a Wendigo. Why are you wearing a party hat? <laughs> okay, this is gonna sound strange. Speaking as someone who's done an enormous quantity of voice acting, uh, voice acting, editing, voice acting, directing, etc. There's a weird gradient in the quality of the people voicing this, which sounds familiar to me because uh, I grabbed about 90 separate people from across the entire planet to voice most of my theater stuff. And you kind of get that kind of variance. It's interesting, though, because there is definitely a few people, there are definitely a few people here, who really know what they're doing. You thought I couldn't do it, now you know I can Making a statue for the king, my man You thought I couldn't do it, now you know I can Now you know I can I have no idea what he's doing with the vacuum Why does he have a vacuum? Why does he have a vacuum? Jester! Ooh, passionate baby Jester! Ooh, Jester little love nerd! I'm gonna stab you Bad news! The princess is leaving! You have to say goodbye to her and confess your feelings! I do not want to have sex with the princess! Why did he escape? He took Betty Beth away from me! Impressed her with his Ferris wheel! Oh, that's what they're calling it nowadays. Oh, I, I didn't get to tell the princess we're doing the contest. Well, there goes a chance to play the festival. Well, anyways, so that was Once Upon a Jester. I already told her. She knows. I got you. What will we buy once we sell the diamond? Happiness and a sense of belonging? Elon Musk's prequel story. Oh my god. The other lover. About to eat them alive. Nom, 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 nom. While being cool. With their glasses off on the wrong way. That's how cool they are. Whoops. God damn it. There we go. Mars, a real extra quick thanks here. If we don't win the contest, we cannot steal the diamond. Just Go! Hmm, what's that music I hear? That's the mayor. Hi. Okay, she's eating ice cream with the ice cream kids, and for some reason there's monks? Random, did you drug me again? 
Welkom to Stad City. I'm Gierigert. Did you just murder the mayor? Jerry Jeremy here. Hello, listeners. My name is Jerry Jeremy, and you're listening live to Stad City Radio. I've been hanging around at the radio station, and I've definitely not been up the steps near the hotel. Next up, the theme of Stad City. Why my ice cream? I know where your family lives. What? I never had candy as a kid. Now I turn kids into candy. Nope, nope, no questions. We're gone. We're done. But unfortunately, what Toad doesn't know is a new player has entered the scene. Sok and Jester just woke up. Move now, while you have been but dreaming, Book and I have been practicing for our theater performance. I hope we kill these two later. It won't be long until we win the contest and perform at the Royal Palace. Seriously, I just want to murder them. We live on the streets, okay? I turn to the GM, please? Come on, I'm desperate, I'm hungry! Do you know how good goat tastes? A little curry? Oh. Will become the number one theater act in the kingdom. Dude, I'm going to use you as kindling to cook your goat. My lover, Gierigruid, murdered! Oh, you're the mayor's ex. Sup? What's with the thing with Ferris wheels? Bedly Beth was the name? Yes, we have to find the one who... Listen, Miss Beth. We at Pester Control take our responsibilities and customer confidentiality very serious. We will find this pesto and control it. Pesto? No, I want you to help me find the murderer of my husband, Mayor Gierigruid. We're on it, Miss Beth. The pesto will be controlled. Um, I also want sleep? But I don't know what sleep is. Don't take that out of context. I have some good and bad news. What's the bad news? Hit me. We cannot do our show tonight because they're using the stage for karaoke today. Dude, let's just murder them. I live on the street. Karaoke? But the good news is that Jerry Jeremy asked us to do a performance on his radio show today. Is it called How I Killed the Mayor by Jerry Jeremy? Smack doodle, that's cool. And that's not all. The princess is in Stutt City. Also investigating the death of the mayor. It breaks my heart to see him like this, Merle. I know, but soon it'll be over, princess. They'll save the kingdom and stop this curse. The curse of weird is what this is called. We need to conform this reality to reality. No, no, no. But you won't be performing there, Sok. Murder. Hello, princess. My name is Hofnar. I am going to be murdered for food later. And then both yo. So, what brings you to Stad City? What? Some people are just meant to be on stage, I guess. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Stop singing. Well, at, at least you admit it. How do you know my name? I might have heard your name back when it was in Dorptown. Dorptown? That reminds me of someone. Have you ever heard of Kletsmajor? Kletsmajor. He sabotaged my life. What? Stalled city mayor was his crush. And took him on affairs for the ride. Kletsmajor. Try to steal my guy. What is this game? 
Something random got me to play because he wanted to break my brain. Out of the way, kid. If I even find a trace of pesto, we're gonna quarantine this whole city. Okay, does pesto mean anything other than the food? Why is there so much music? Hey princess, look! You can see the whole city from here. Yeah, whoa! This is so exciting! You have a very boring life. Almost as high as the towers of the royal palace. It must be so cool to be a princess. Well, lately it's not so great. Oh, what's wrong? My family, the curse... Ugh. There's just a lot on my mind lately. Curse? Did I say curse? I, I mean oysters. Dude, oysters are always on my mind. No, you said curse. No, I said oysters. Sometimes I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. It's hard to find the good in yourself. The good in yourself? I Mine is now, Chester. No, that you're absolutely right, Larian. That just happened. So, what's your story? Well, Sok and I have been goofing around all our lives in Dorptown, but we weren't really going anywhere. I've always felt stuck, like something was missing. I'm trying really hard not to break into a song from Aladdin right now. I can show you the world. There's a curse or something. Oh, okay. Oh. Who wants to get really boring and talk about math? So, notes uh, fulfill a you could assign a number to every note that exists. And you might think, well, what about half notes or partial notes? But no, that's just gradient, right? The, 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 the number of fractions that exist between one and two is infinite. So every note can be assigned a number. But the thing is, there's a certain amount of um, formula to what notes match what other notes. Um, you've probably heard of this before because you've probably heard of the concept of a chord. You play these three or these four, or these five, and they all match each other. Now here's the cool part. Uh, a lot of song design, especially this kind of vocal song design, is all about knowing which, num uh, which numbers coincide with which other numbers. Not just in the specifics, but in the generics. Um, 
if you've ever seen a really talented musician, especially either a pianist or a guitar player, they're really, really good at knowing how to play even without having music in front of them or not from memory. In other words, just playing a song off the top of their head because they know from memory and experience and practice which kind of notes blend with which other kind of notes. So they can dynamically on the fly make something that sounds like a song because of that math. Now, what does this have to do with this game? I don't know if you caught it, but I was actually doing the violin bit myself there. Now, obviously I can't decide the note, but I could decide the tempo. I could decide when notes were played and for how long. Which means all of the design of the notes, all the numbers, were on the game's side of things while being put underneath a pre-existing song. So all of the notes that were being played had to be a note that coincided with every note that was being sung up top, right? Every, every note had to be had to be uh, a chord with either all of them, or it had to be able to dynamically adjust to which one was being played at the time. I'm not sure which one they were doing. But either way, that had to be carefully thought out, designed, mathed, and then done. That is more impressive than I, th I would expect from this game. So I'm going to give it a positive one. We can send a letter back and fill the envelope with sugar! Are we going to need babies for such you? Bring me my sprinkles! Stop it. Life isn't always wonderful and sweet, Conrad. You can't solve everything with sugar, pistachio. Ever since what happened last summer, I feel sad all the time. And that's okay. But what really makes me feel bad is that I can't talk about it with you guys. Um... Okay, I'm gonna go now. Prince Pills, tell him the story. The story? Okay, well... I lost my arm in a bed, and now I got a dragon arm. How monumentally stupid are you that you gambled your arm? And a very handsome dragon arm at that. <laughs> uh, Prince Pills, enough chatting. Let's play rock, paper, dragon again. Is that a euphemism for masturbation? Because if it is, I am out of here. We used to be friends, you know. Gletsmajor and I. Each summer, we went to Zeehafen Harbor and sneaked into the pirate ships. But when my lovely Gierigruid entered the picture, everything changed. He couldn't accept it when we got married. He left and became the mayor of Dorptown. Sounds like a step up to me. We never talked since. Hey, princess, are you alright? Father is so... Cursed. Dumb. Fat. Ugly, stupid, worthless, bad in bed, King Henry the Eighth. Sorry, was that last one too real? Rosa, what, what power is this? Power of your new protector, King. The power of my new knight. This is gonna be the easiest highlight reel ever. I'm just gonna put the whole VOD up on YouTube and say, done. Frog it. Let's do it. What could go wrong? Never. Ever say that. Because the universe has two rules about it. One is it has a mean sense of humor, and two, it thinks it's funny. I've done the most horrible things to get to you, but now that I see you, Pesto, you're the most beautiful thing that I've seen in my life. Howdy, listeners. As always, you're listening to your favorite host, Jerry Jeremy. We've got some fantastic news. Kierkegaard's investigation stopped, and that's, uh, terrible, of course. This is a song for Pesto. Besto, you're the besto. Your hair's made of spaghetti. Your sauce is dry, not wetty. Oh, how I miss you bitterly. And how I miss Gierigruid. Me too, buddy. Gierigruid. He was the love of our life. The stars in the mayor of our hearts. It took us on Ferris wheel rides. Gierigruid. I've seen your theater show, Blueberry. And I have to ask. Why? Why can't the world be as beautiful as your theater play? 
because I haven't conquered it yet. Seeing you on stage with that raspberry, it makes me feel stuff. I'm Shash to tell it, by the way. Nice to meet you. Hi. Oh. I guess we're there now. Why is there a skeleton with an active recorder that is currently recording? What? D don't get off screen. Explain that. I, I demand explanations. Anybody home? In fact, in fact, we're going to pause in this exploration of this empty and dead pound. I want to know what this is. Thursday, July, springtime. I'm going to do research for my biggest role yet. A new screenplay called Sitting Against a Tree for a Very Long Time. Here we go. About Woods. It's every bit as creepy as the stories they told us as kids. Wendigos, witches, water boys. They aren't real, right? Let sock, sock! There's no such thing as water boys. So you're all going to Zehava Harbor next? Ah, the smell of dead fish and water boys. They don't exist! I'm leaving my past behind. Please be my friend. Don't you still eat people? I don't know. When the girls are dangerous, she might eat my face. But do we need a bass player? But can she play the bass? I'm going to drag you into a D&D &D campaign, and then you're going to regret it, because you're going to have me as a GM. <laughs> uh, some breakfast? Oh my god! You ate the Frankenfrog! Who's that? It's the spider-legged witch! At this point in the game, the joke is that she is saying horse-legged witch. But we've been teasing in the dialogue that she has spider legs. And obviously, her legs don't look like uh, horse legs. Okay, okay, there's breaking the fourth wall, and then there's taking a sledgehammer to it. I shouldn't have come here. This is no place for a frog. I should uh, be in a city or a town or something. Not a creepy forest like this one. Wendy, let's make this happen! That's what you call a boomerang joke. No, because this game isn't weird, Evo. I know what you're saying. Huh? Hold on. Let's make a topic out of this. So, weird to the point where things are just disjointed or nonsensical in a way that makes things creepy or unnatural or surreal is something that I usually refer to as capital W, weird. We talked about this not actually all that long ago with Paradise Killer. This is, there's actually a specific term for this. This is non sequitur. You could call this a lot of other things, silly, bizarre, but non sequitur is the precise thing because the whole goal here is to be humorous. This is a joke. And that's different. Because jokes, uh, by the by the terminology, let, let's establish some terminology here. By the terminology we're utilizing, jokes, humor, parody, you know, fic that kind of stuff cannot be surreal or creepy or capital W weird by definition, because that's a completely separate category over there, right? Um, you, you don't look at something like specific example, men in tights, and say, that's weird, capital W, because it's all being done for a specific and deliberate purpose to add to the elevated tone, the humorous tone. I say elevated because... <sighs> oh, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. You can have higher to tone and you can have lower tone, and uh, there's a lot of ways to go high and there's a lot of ways to go low. But humor is definitely a high tone. 
whereas things that are more severe or stark or terrifying or depressing or dark tends to be low. And yeah, I was actually specifically going to bring up West of Loathing, which is another game, a parody game, which is not a capital W weird game, but is a lowercase w weird game through and through. It is deliberately designed to be a sequence of seemingly random events with but you'll notice there's still coherence here you'll notice there is mathematical humor going on um i mentioned the, damn it Raven. i mentioned the boomerang joke earlier uh how about the ongoing saga of the dead mayor or the guy from the first town and the woman from the second town who both coincide with the dead mayor what i mean by this is true weird and true surreal doesn't bother to have this level of logic and reason to it. And I know that sounds strange, considering I, I started this whole thing by describing it as non-sequitur, but again, I point to a lot of parody works, which deliberately go out of their way to maintain that thread of coherence. Why? Because one of the most common rules in all of humor is the rule of three, which I've talked about many times. You establish, you then, you, you, you do a payoff, and usually there's a pause, you wait for a bit, and then you do it again. The very nature, the very nature of the, the rule of three means you have to maintain self-coherence. <sighs> Random example. Let's say uh, the frog, the Frankenstein guy we saw earlier. He shows up and he's like, hey, you shouldn't do this thing, blah, 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 blah. Then we wander off and then he comes back dead. But then he comes back to the dead. And then if he says something completely unrelated to his previous thing, then there's no joke there. That's just weird. It, there's no logic, there's no internal consistency, there's no nothing. But the fact that he specifically then took what he was telling us, flipped that back on himself, as a direct reaction to the death that he suffered at the hands of Evo, that establishes internal consistency. And now we have the joke, because the thread is consistent throughout it. I know I'm very boring, but as I've said before, I actually legitimately find the topic and the... the formulas, the construction of humor, tremendously fascinating. So, trust me when I say that I've been paying attention, and this game is probably going to be a triple humor positive game, in addition to individual moments and other things, because I couldn't think of her name, Eva, what do you want from me? Because it was the Windigo, that was the Windigo. Because of the fact that some real actual thought and effort was clearly put into the, I struggle to use this word here, narrative. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to go right back to the Mel Brooks films. Because if you, I'm sure most of you have watched a Mel Brooks film and enjoyed it, but if you've ever actually sat down and really analyzed it, you'll notice that everything I'm talking about is very much there. There's a lot of internal consistency. There's a lot of internal logic, and there's a lot of threads going through his films so that his jokes work. Specifically, so that his jokes work. I, I hate to keep banging on the point about Mel Brooks, but the man's a freaking genius. What do you want from me? Anyways. Uh, hit the thing there, so we stopped doing that. This is gonna be a big highlight reel, good lord. You know these people? We used to hang out a little. Yeah, hang out? We were inseparable! The four loud, annoying men they call us! That's a terrible name. Why do you have a fish hook in your mouth? Are you loud? Why do you have a fish on your arm? My name is Snook, and this is Katoon. Yep, a fish in all my life. Helps me relax, helps me deal with the misfortune. Freak is the name. Nice to meet you. I'm Jester. Any luck today? Just fish. Oh? Ugh, just fish again. Uh. So, not to be boring, but I've already sussed out the genre here. This is a visual novel. It's a series, the gameplay, which is what determines the genre of a game, is primarily focused on making choices in dialogue, which can change how cutscenes go, and doing occasional mini games and little QTEs in order to keep things going in a good fashion. It's a visual novel. Jester, Jester, Jester. Having a little chit chat. Why are you so evil? Is it. Is it because one of your parents is a freaking tree? Are you ashamed that your mother had sex with a tree? Are you a treeist? Wolfnar? Sorry, Jester. Now is not a good time. I'm gonna snap off one of your antlers and shove them into your jaw. 
And don't worry, I'm not going to miss because there's plenty to hit. Yeah, I hope they know how to swim. Because I see one of the legendary ships on the horizon there, and that's, uh... Those fights suck. That's not cool, Fig and Avocado Mango Mignon. Hofner has a really good theater show. No, he doesn't. At least he's doing something with his life. No, he's not. Jester, you've changed, man. Let's get out of here, Katoon. Katoon! Still gonna eat you. Brochure said nice dinner. Said nice ship, lost my soul instead. Now it's just waiting for the Kraken to catch me. Oh? It's okay, I don't have the black mark. Um. Never mind. Okay, we're gonna pretend we didn't see anything. And move on with our lives. Just sir, listen up. You're hunting like a shark. Well, you should have been playing like a dolphin. What? You're hunting like a shark. Well, you should have been playing like a dolphin. Oh, that makes much more sense now. Thank you. Okay. Hey, I don't think we're friends with Snook and Katoon anymore. Excellent. Oh, fine by me. What happened? They were bullying Hofnar and Bok. Doesn't that make us more friendly towards them? And honestly, I'd much rather have Hofnar and Bok in my life than those two fish. Why? Scary statue? I've never been so afraid in my life. Who made this? It is I, the feared, uh... The feared businessman. Gah! I thought you were just a sculptor. But alas, you're my worst fear. A businessman working a desk job your whole life. Marry me, King. We'll have a boring life together. We'll both work in offices and be too tired to talk to each other when we come home. We Ouch. Might just to spice things up. Carl! Now behold, the business dance. <laughs> no, not that. <gasps> this is my worst nightmare. That's not life. <laughs> this is my worst nightmare. <laughs> that's, what say, that's the bad ending, apparently. Jester, I wanted you guys to steal the diamond. What? Why? My father... Is cursed by the diamond, I got it. He's cursed. Cursed by that demonic gem. The diamond is taking over my father's mind. Our family is breaking apart. The kingdom is on the brink of collapsing. And one day, it will take me too. I'm sure of it. The curse. So that's what you were talking about on the Ferris wheel. I felt so bad for using you guys. I almost told you right then and there. But now that I see how much you guys have grown, you have an actual successful theater act and are following your dreams. <sighs> but now you're tied with Hofnar and Bok. Let's just sacrifice Hofnar and Bok to the gem. Done! This is easy! You and Sok only started the theater show to get a diamond? But then you fell in love with the beauty of theater? That warms my heart and brings a tear to my eye. Good, I like salt with my goat. Yeah, yeah, I'm a wizard, yeah. Yawn the wizard, yeah. Yeah. Shush! Can you keep it down? You don't speak that way to Nickelback. Christina and I had everything we wanted. And he still lost his arm in a dumb bet. Oh, Drac. You know what? I'm glad that I did. Prince Pills, I... I... Bro! <laughs> and that's why parties suck.
The end. You know, another important thing to party going? Good food selection. And I don't just mean putting out, like, good food. Because, like the boring managerial type I am, you gotta think about what kind of food works with other food, right? If you just put out a bunch of Pop-Tarts and Skittles and Fruit Punch, all you're gonna do is kill everyone's tongues, right? So you gotta think about it. So here we've got salad, cheese cubes, and peppers. This is a terrible combination, but that's okay, because this could actually be fixed really easy. All you need is some nice, good grilled hot dogs, and this would actually help out with the situation tremendously, because then you could actually bounce between the different uh, flavor types with all four items. See, one of the funny things is a lot of people think of pizza as the typical party food, and for good reason. But the problem with using pizza is that you need to have a pretty good variety of pizza. And you can't just do like that half and half thing. Because half and half means like three or four slices per type. So if you get half pepperoni and half you know, pineapple, for example, then there are four slices that the pineapple lover get and four slices the pepperoni lovers get. So it's going to be expensive. Now you can plan for that. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'm Lower Runner. Uh, my job is to make everything as boring as humanly possible. Oh, we're sneaking. We're up. <laughs> hold up. Hold up. Hold up. We have to level stealth. Father, what are you still doing here? Oh, Father, we are going to save you. Save you from this horrible curse that has struck you. Once we are rid of the diamond, the curse will be lifted. Diamond? Curse? I'm not cursed. Huh? Where'd the elephant come from? Why is there a dead person under the piano? That is a mannequin, right? Getting away from bad thoughts Sometimes running around is all also, I'll tell you exactly what happened to the goat. I took the diamond and I ate the goat. He was delicious. Final scores. This game gets a net positive to story of plus 12. That feels high, admittedly, but actually it kind of isn't. Um, I, I don't mean that as an unkind thing. What I mean is that a visual novel like this should have a good story score. If it doesn't, something's wrong. So, that's good. We're cool there. What is a little bit surprising here is that uh, that gives us a story per hour of 2.93. That's density, of course, which is that high because this game is ludicrously short. No surprise there. And the ratio is 100% because there's no negatives. Then we jump over to the gameplay side of things. Now, I already talked about this during the highlight reel and during the stream yesterday, of course, but... The gameplay is surprisingly good here, almost entirely because of the you-can-play-along-to-the-music mechanic, which was surprisingly well done and legitimately impressive in how they implemented it. Plus four net to gameplay, which gives us a gameplay per hour density of 0.98, and of course, once again, 100% ratio, which gives us our final golden number of... drumroll, please... Forty-eight point five one. That's uh pretty high, all things considered. That is uh that is an averagely good game, but for a low budget indie thing that almost doesn't have gameplay, that's actually a really good score, all things being completely blunt. Uh, I usually I like to put my thoughts at the end here, but honestly, the only two talking points I've already discussed, I've talked about uh, threads of humor and how to, to construct those, and that's in the highlight reel, of course, and I've already talked about um, the music thing and how impressive it is. This was a surprisingly wholesome and fun game to go through. If it's not obvious, some of my reactions were a little exaggerated for the sake of going with it, but, and this is going to sound strange, it's because the game allowed it? 
So I've mentioned before, I used to be really good at improv, but there's one key thing about improv that not a lot of people talk about. You have to have someone or something to play off of, right? It's much harder or, or arguably impossible to just improv in front of nothing, right? With nobody to play off of, with no audience to play off of, etc. Just doing it by yourself. In my case, I was playing off of the game because the game kept laying them out so I could knock them over, right? And it just kept doing it, and I just kept going with it. And it was such a smooth thing, I wasn't even thinking about it half the time because it was so clearly set up for that. So, make of that what you will. Also, I plan to buy this game a second time on the Switch so that I can have my niece play it. I'm going to buy it on my Switch because I want to make sure that I'm there for when she plays it because I'm an evil uncle. I don't know what else to say about that. I like the game. I'm buying it a second time for my niece. Later today, when I'm finished with the highlight reel and all that wonderful paperwork, we're going to be starting up the Devil May Cry block. <laughs>